because um, pretty much, yeah, everyone else couldn't make it tonight. So I thought I'll just record it because I did actually prepare some notes for this one. Um, okay. Basically, it's just talking again a little bit more about mindset. Um, so like how people generally find comfort in food. Um, yeah. Comfort or celebration in food. So one or the other, right? And for example, like I've had a rough week, so therefore I need wine and chocolate or I've had a good week, so therefore I deserve a chocolate cake. So there's always yes. going to be this the celebration or this, you know, oh, stress, you know, coping mechanisms, all the rest of it. And a good mantra to say is I can do hard things because, you know, what I've just mentioned is, you know, really just finding a clutch and trying to take the easy way out, you know, instead of going, well, no, but long term, this is what I really want. And if I'm just going to constantly just do what I want in the short term, I'm never really going to get what I want in the long term. Um, and I guess for yourself, that's where, sorry, I'm just going to turn my phone on silent. You're right. Uh, I guess for yourself, it's like when you had that moment when the penny dropped and you're like, nah, I'm ready, enough's enough, this and that, you know, and the reason why I need to do this is because I really need to be a good role model for my kids. And it's like, bang, there it is, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and and I guess, you know, like doing what's hard in the short term, what's really hard about eating better? Realistically, what's hard about it? When you're nourishing your body, you're feeling better, you're fueling your body with the proper nutrients. Is that hard? Like that's hard, is it? I think when I got my head around the um to the fueling your body to move, like <laughs> instead of indulge like the indulgence and the the abundance of flavors and stuff, that once I got used to that, like I need to fuel my body to literally go. Um that made everything easier too. Yep. So one thing one of my coaches used to say to us competitors, if you're competing for bodybuilding, for example, my like bodybuilding is dieting at like the highest level. And he'd say, you have to eat for utility. This is not for pleasure right now. This is for you to achieve your best physique that you can put on stage. Yeah. Painful process because it was controlled starvation. In the end, I was like, it's, this is not for me. It's just not for me. But through that process, oh, hello, Bubba. Oh, sorry. <laughs> hello, Munchkin. Through that process, there was a lot of um, discipline acquired through that. And it's like, okay, well, if I can do it at this extreme, well, then I can, I can manage this on a day-to-day basis for everyday living and eating, you know, with less restriction. And obviously it's not as um, calibrated. It's not as counted. It's just... I can eyeball this now, but I can pretty much um, stay at this level now consistently because I can eyeball things and I've got that habit and routine in place. But I had to do what was hard for a while to get there, you know? And that's the point I want to make to anyone obviously listening to this today is that the short term, you know, it really does pay off for the long term. Do what's hard for a couple of months to set you up for life if that's all it takes, to acquire a new habit, right? If you can do it solid for 90 days, you can probably do it for the next nine years. Not a bad trade-off of time when you think about it. Rather than trying to push shit uphill constantly year in, year out, you're constantly starting a new challenge every year and not really getting out of it what you should be getting, which is it trying to set you up for success for life. Mm -mm. Right? So you want to make this challenge the last time you have to actually start something. Like start it and make it the last time you start. That's it. And just do it. Uh, Okay. So another thing too, you need to earn credibility within yourself and actually stick to what you say. Otherwise you lack integrity as a person. So every time you bullshit yourself, right, and you don't stick to something, really look in the mirror and go, you know, is this who I really am as a person? Do I really start things and not finish them? Do I really let myself down on a consistent basis? Is that who I truly am? Do I let others down the way I let myself down? Something to really think about. So for the next 30 days, I want to challenge you to say three to five things positive to yourself each day. 
Um, and, I, and I know that this doesn't have to be written down per se, but if you can spend the first hour of your day when you're getting ready and you look in the mirror and you say, I love this about me. I am fortunate about this. I'm grateful for this. And actually start designing your day and preempting how the day is going to play out. Because I know that I, it happened to me the other day and I was having all this anxiety and all these emotions and up and down and this forethought of work and do these people like me? Do they not like me? I feel like a sore thumb in Queensland. I'm not going to lie. Okay. So it's very, very Australian here in Queensland. I'm from Melbourne. So right now my anxieties are, do I actually fit in Gold Coast? And in a big way, yes, I do, because there's a lot of tourists here. And then in a large way, I feel I don't for a number of cultural reasons. But it's, a, it's one of those things where I'm like, okay, well, disregard the fact that, you know, you're this hardcore European from Melbourne and just maybe see it as a um, can ch completely change the narrative, completely change it. Tell yourself that you are well liked even if you feel you are not. Not because of what culture you are, but because of who you are as an individual. The person at the front desk who you think doesn't like you, maybe has nothing to do with you. Maybe they're stressed out at their job and they don't have the extra energy to give you what you feel you deserve as a human being. So I was starting to kind of see things from a different perspective and go, maybe this is not about me at all. Maybe everyone's doing life the best way and version that they know right now and that their reaction towards me is not a reflection of who I am but a reflection of themselves. Does that make sense? Yeah? I can't hear you. Sorry, I just had it on mute. My daughter's... Um... <laughs> Yeah. And try to feed and do the call and <laughs> you poor girl. No, I'm glad you've um you've actually shown up at all, to be honest with you. But it's basically how you view yourself. Okay. So if we don't put in the work every day and tell ourselves the the narrative that we want to start shifting and we can start really designing our day. Yeah. So you know what? It's gonna be a fantastic day. I'm gonna nail it for these reasons. Um, I'm going to protect my energy from any negative energy that may come, but I'm still going to have a good day. And the people that I feel don't like me has nothing to do with me and it has everything to do with how they feel about themselves. They do like me, but they're probably just having a shit day, right? For example. And it's amazing that when I did that, how much nicer everyone was to me at work. Just like, mm. so it was like, you are what you attract. You attract what you Yeah, control. it's so it's true. Yourself. And it's amazing how literally like night and day, our whole reality shifts. Because when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change at the end of the day. So you stand in the mirror each day and you tell yourself these things. You start designing your day, start preempting that outcome and you watch your life change over the next 30 days. Right? So do you know how, do you notice how much of this challenge has nothing to do with nutrition and training and everything to do with mindset? Yes. We yeah. talk nothing of food and, and training because most of you know what to do. Most of you know how to eat healthy. Most of you know exercise in any form, whether it's body weight, whether it's weight training, most of you have your routines in place. You have access to free programs online. So really, you have that roadmap. But mindset is the hardest part of this journey. Because with mindset, it's not a six-week program on a, you know, training program like it is, okay? Mindset is not a broccoli sitting in your fridge ready to be eaten. Hmm. It is undoing the shit you've been doing for your entire life. And that takes real work. 
and real consistent. And that's not yeah. on autopilot because eating is survival. So that, that part's easy, right? But changing the way you eat starts here. It starts and finishes here. Okay. And so because our brains are wired for survival, if we don't do the reps in the mindset department, we're always going to go back to what we need to do just to survive, not to thrive. Our brains are not wired to thrive unless we train it to thrive. Okay. So your day is a combination of the books you read, the people you surround yourself with and the things you tell yourself. So really look at that spectrum. Who am I surrounding myself by? Are they conducive to my journey or not? What books am I reading? What TV am I watching? Am I watching the bullshit news with their bullshit narrative and all their negativity? And am I thinking that that's actual reality? Or am I going to educate myself with an amazing mentor online that's going to really expand my mindset? Is what I'm doing going to help me and get to point A to point B? Mm. And that's some of the, you know, you hear a lot of that. Um, you are what you eat and you are what you hang around. So like it sort of all ties in totally. together. Um, yeah, makes so much sense. 100%. So this is obviously a journey and it's not a destination. Yeah, this is a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. You are constantly upgrading. I'll give you a good analogy. Apple, okay, is always sending Mac users software updates as they always find bugs and they're always looking at ways to improve the operating experience for the end user. So can you imagine trying to download new apps, running it on the same old software, AKA thought process? It's the same thing with human beings, okay? Mm. As you upgrade and as you break through the next level, because you're gonna make constant breakthroughs within yourself. You've hit a breakthrough, Right? I guarantee you in a month or so, you'll make another breakthrough and another breakthrough. And it's just constant breakthroughs, upgrades, transformations, setbacks, another transformation, setback, and again, and it keeps going and it doesn't stop, right? This doesn't get easier. You just get better at managing it, right? So yeah. the better and more better equipped mentally that you are to deal with stress, okay, the more life will throw at you, but the more abundant you will become as well because the more wisdom you will have in life. And that's what I found in my life too is I said, okay, I want, I want my life to look like this. I want to achieve greatness. So the universe said, okay, let's see what you're really made of. And I had everything thrown my way from, you name it, it was thrown my way. And I was like, far out. This is insane. This is intense. I had to find the silver lining in everything because if I didn't, I would have thrown in the towel and probably done the complete opposite of what I normally do, right? And it's like, all right. And, and this is what I mean about hard, is that my life was incredibly hard last year, but because I had that preparation and mindset of being able to do what's hard or deal with what's hard in the short term, I knew that that pain was very much temporary. And so going through a year of crap from being homeless to my business suffering to losing two best friends to losing my entire family, I felt like I had nothing left. It also gave me permission to make a huge life decision, which was to uproot my life into state, made sure I had some friends in place ready to go and hope for the best and just hope that this change came from a place of knowing that it was going to work but also manifesting part of that process as well and going, right, if I'm going to go there, I'm going to achieve this. What I wasn't able to do in Melbourne, I will, able, I will be able to do it here, but a lot of that came from preempting how I wanted it to sort of play out. Now, obviously, things don't always turn out exactly to plan, but we can sure as hell design 
the basic foundation of how we feel that could turn out. And then as time goes on, you know, you're doing the reps mentally. If things don't go exactly to plan, we have the mental fortitude to really deal with it. It's the same with this journey mm. too. You're trying to better yourself, but life's always going to happen and step in your way. Someone's going to pass away. You're yeah. going to lose your job. Your partner's going to be away for work. The kids are going to be a handful. Life doesn't stop for you. It's just how do you manage you in the mm. chaos, chaos of everything around you? And that's what this journey is all about. Yeah, manage you so you can manage everything yeah. in life. Yeah, that's pretty much it from, from me tonight. So we're coming into week seven. So I just wanted to really bring that home for this week. I might bring on a guest for next week. Do you have any feedback on that? Just how um, it makes it now that we are, you know, over halfway, um, a lot of the stuff that gets said at the beginning and that it may, it's making more sense and um, starting to tie in with more of like, my goals and my lifestyle that I'm trying to be consistent with and everything like that. Um, so, yeah, I think it just resonates more now where it's like I think you hear a lot of things, but until you're truly ready and truly ready to dive into something, um, it is a little bit like one in one ear out the other kind of thing. Like you have the knowledge, but you're just like um, – maybe ignorant I don't know um the right word to it's use but good. when you're actually really mm. it's it's like yeah it's like okay I go to a dance party and a live dance party as opposed to listening to the same song on the radio two very completely different experiences feeling that music come through your body in a stage versus coming through the speakers in your car totally different experience I could sit there and tell you all day long how good it was and you'd be like oh yeah oh yeah that sounds all right but to be there and to experience that it's a different feeling and this is the same thing is that doesn't matter what I tell you until you're ready to actually experience it for yourself right then you understand everything that I preach to you and you're like now I yeah. feel connected to what you're saying because I'm going through it now. Whereas before it was in one and I, or the other. Yeah. And I think I'm making, I'm definitely making, um, making things happen. So yes, life happens, shit happens, but you know, um, if things are going crazy with the kids or like all of a sudden we have like an emergency appointment and this and that, I, I I'm making, my day still end right and like um that's like with the meal prep so it's all there I can just grab it and I can just like um take it with me or even like a lot of the time I just prep the rice and the veggies like just grab the a can of tuna whatever I'm not making excuses like okay so we're just going to go to Macca's on the way yeah you know like um so you just make shit happen more, I think, as well when you're totally when you become serious. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. You find you find ways to navigate it. You stop finding excuses. So it's really good. Yeah. Um, awesome. All right, I'm going to stop recording because.